excuse my daughter here who's making a noise, being a nuisance. Okay, let's try again. So I think that was always going to be ambitious to do that in the gym with my daughter around. Um, so, so what exactly am I doing in the gym? It looks pretty different to what everybody else is doing. And what am I doing in my classes? Because my classes are very different to what everybody else is doing as well. Um, so, first I'm going to tell you why I work out. I think that's probably a good link into, into what I'm doing. So why I'm trying to improve my posture and trying to improve my movement. Uh, basically it's number two, trying to improve my movement because improving your posture, the reason for that is to improve your movement. That's the whole point. Uh, so how do I do it? So first I usually do about an hour of myofascial release, which is like um, self-massage. Uh, sometimes I do this at home, sometimes I do it in the gym. Then I turn up at the gym and I'll do some little uh, warm-up exercises, uh, you might see that they're a bit strange as well and then I'll do some even weirder exercises on top of that. Um, in the class obviously I, I can't really do the myofascial release, that takes too much time, uh, but I do the same thing, so the warm-up exercises and then uh, some, some rather odd looking exercises which involve much more swinging than lifting. Um, right now, I'll briefly explain a little bit about that. So I thought I'd use this little, this little toy, my daughter's toy, uh, to explain this. So this toy is uh, what we call a tensegrity structure. So basically these, these wooden struts uh, are all held up by the tension uh, on these little kind of elastic band things here. Uh, now it's in pretty much perfect balance now. So if you, if you were to put it down and squeeze it, it just bounces right back. Uh, to its original state. It's because the tension is, um, is equally managed across all of these little elastic bands. So you can imagine the human body is a bit like this. Uh, the human body is a tensegrity structure. It's a much more complicated tens tensegrity structure than this, obviously. Uh, so let's explain what happens to most people in everyday life then. So uh, as your posture deteriorates with age, and this is, can be down to a, array of things, could be genetic, could be, uh, could be lifestyle, uh, could be because of injuries, that sort of thing, um, you get a kind of compressive effect on your, on your body like this and then it puts pressure uh, on each of these, at the ends of each of these little struts here. So on this structure it's putting pressure on, on here and then if I was to hold this for a long time I've no doubt that one of these elastic bands would probably break at the, at the of the joint there. Um, so you can imagine if the human body is the same thing, these are the joints, uh, you can imagine that the pressure is forming on your joints as your body is compressed over the years uh, by bad posture and just ultimately the force of gravity um, pushing down on you. So what I want to do is make this structure uh, kind of lengthened and healthy. Uh, it's, got it, it's got its own little code here, a, a kind of tension, an equal tension between all the struts. The human body is the same thing. It's got kind of a code of tension that it holds in different areas of the body. The bigger the areas of your of muscle, uh, the more tension is held on those areas. So it's not like this. This is all evenly spread. But what tends to happen um, is if you get like an injury or bad posture forms, you get a shortening uh, of one of these areas. So you can think of this as the muscle and connective tissue in the human body. And if I should put that right up to the camera and squeeze two points, you can see it doesn't only affect those two points, but it puts pressure on other parts. So if I pull that, pull those two together, shorten this area, there's a lot of pull over here. So you can think of this as, as your body. You start feeling pain over in this region over here. Um, and then you roll out this region or you stretch this region, but actually the source of the, the, source of the pain is over here. Um, and that's kind of like uh, what's going on in your body quite a lot. So let's, let's just go through um, those three aspects that I do then. So, so the myofascial release and then kind of the corrective exercises. So like the little warm-up corrective exercise and then the ex corrective exercises with the weight. 
So imagine you've got a few of these shortened areas and this will be very much like your body. So we've got like one here, this is shortened. Uh, we've got one here, this is shortened and one here. And then all of a sudden, look at the, the, the if you can see that, the whole thing is warped now um, out of shape, much like most of our bodies are very much warped out of shape uh, by our restrictions in these areas. So the restrictions in these, uh, you can think of this as muscle and connective tissue, uh, are caused by strain uh, over your lifetime and then the muscle and fascia packs very tightly. So the first thing to do is if we've got a tight muscle and fascia here is to massage it out so we can re-tension it. So that's the first thing I do. I use the, the myofascial uh, release to massage out the, the buildup of tension. Uh, but the problem is if you've got all of these little areas of tension warping your structure, you've learned to move in a very different way because of that over the years. And I've spent many years playing squash, which is not a very natural, uh, natural thing to do. Uh, and you know, I've sat, I've been sitting around too much. I've done various other activities and even the activities that come naturally uh, to human beings like walking and running, they become compromised because your posture is compromised. So you've learned to move in a completely different way. So it's not enough to just massage out these problems. You've then got to learn to move as a unit again, as an integrated unit. And that's what the corrective exercises are for. So the first thing I do is do the warm up, which just helps me go through a range of motion. And it's often uh, simulating uh, running or walking or sprinting, uh, taking it through the range of that motion, but without placing too much load or weight on it to begin with. And then I use some weights and take myself through that range of motion with much greater load. And that's basically the idea of the training. Um, I focus not so much on muscle groups as so much as lines. And I'll put a few examples up around the screen here. Um, so I'll focus on maybe a front line exercise, uh, a lateral line exercise down here where I'm moving this way. Front, front and back lines I'm going to be moving forward and backwards. And that will lengthen uh, the front line of my body of muscle and fascia and lengthen the back line and I want to lengthen the lateral lines so I actually start lengthening muscle and connective tissue before I contract it. One of the problems with um, conventional weight training um, and it's not too much of a criticism because it's very important to do, uh, to do weight training particularly as you get older and it's simple to do as well so it's not something that you have to spend a lot of time studying or being very careful doing. Once you've got the basic techniques, it's very easy to do and it's good for you. But one of the limitations of it, let's say, is that you go from a shortened state, uh, already shortened state, so let's say you're doing a bench press, for example, uh, the muscle is, is already either shortened or, or just neutral, and then you just make the muscle shorter. So you go from a, a neutral or shortened state to going shorter. What ideally you want to do in your movement is to take your muscle to a lengthened state under a load and then contract off of that so you get this kind of elastic uh, effect. So you're not wasting any energy so that you load your muscle with elastic potential energy and then you contract off of that. So when you watch me do these exercises, uh, there's kind of an elastic bouncy feel to the exercise and that's what I'm trying to do. But to do that, you have to be pretty integrated. You see, this has got an elastic, bouncy feel to it, this toy, uh, when, it's, when all the struts are fairly well integrated. Once you start pinching a few of them together, there's no elasticity anymore, and this is exactly what happens in, in your body. To be honest, it takes a lot longer to explain what I'm doing uh, with any real detail. Uh, and there are a lot of things that I'm gonna miss in this little video but I hope that that, um, that at least gives you some idea of what I'm doing and what I'm trying to do in the class is basically I'm trying to get you to move in, a, in an integrated manner so that we get your elasticity back, which is ultimately what takes the load off of your joints and keeps you healthy as you age. Because that elastic effect 
kind of decompresses all your joints and particularly your spine which takes a lot of compression over, over the years. Um, so I'm going to try and expand that and that's why I swing weight so as the weight comes up I'm bringing my, my upper torso with it and my rib cage and that's just helping me decompress my spine and a lot of the other joints and tissues in my body as well. Well I hope that kind of explains it. Uh, I've got posture courses coming up. Those are for six weeks and by the end of that you get a lot better idea about what my training is like and, um, and also uh, a lot better idea about what I'm doing in the gym. I hope this gives, at least gives you some idea about it. Um, so I'll see you in the gym.